Hey everybody, Rich here. This video is going to go over actions in AppSheet and how to use them. Actions are a way to conduct data changes or view changes that follow a set of rules that you want to apply to your application itself. Actions can be found under Behavior and the Actions tab. All actions need to be associated with a table. In this case, we'll select the Person table in this app that I'm using. And immediately you'll see that this action is visible in the App Emulator on the right side of the screen. There are a variety of different types of actions, and we'll go through each one of them. Copy this row and edit this copy is an action that allows you to copy all the data from the current record you're in and open up and edit those details before the form gets saved. Next is ex export this view to a CSV file. This allows you to have users download any table data from the back end part of the app. Go to another app sheet app is just like it sounds. You could enter the app ID and use a deep link here. Go to another view in this will allow you to use these other type of deep links, such as link to view, link to row, link to form, link to filtered view, and even link to parent view as well. Import a CSV file. If users want to do bulk uploads in AppSheet, you can use this action to capture a template that's been filled out by your users in CSV form open a form and add a new row to this table. This opens up a form that allows you to fill out that form just like you would be adding a new record to the table. Open a form to edit this row is very simply the ability to click an edit button in the current record that you're looking at and open up a form view as I'm showing you here on the right side where the user can edit that. Add a new row to another table using values from this row now this differs slightly from the, the copy row and edit in that this will automatically just copy the record without any additional user interaction. Delete this row is self-explanatory. It'll delete that record from your data source. Execute an action on a set of rows is a more complex type of action. This allows you to target specific records from a, another table of your choosing and identify each of the IDs from that table under referenced rows. So you'll create a list of IDs for that table in this field and then choose the action I want to run. Set the values of some columns in this row. This is straightforward. I, you know, if you have some columns here that when you have a user click the button that you want to populate, you could simply pre-populate those based off a of formula. And then the users have a button they could click on that will automatically populate the fields with those values that you specify in your formula. Start a phone call. This will open up your phone dialer. The same with text messages. Start an email. This will open up a draft email in your operating system. So whatever email app you're using, it'll pre-populate the two subject and body fields with uh, whatever you want it to, but it will not send an email. And then lastly, group is very handy because it allows you to add multiple actions together in series and have AppSheet accomplish them in one action itself. Next, we'll go into the different um, appearances that can be set for these actions. There's action icons. You can choose the icon that you want to represent that action. And then under prominence, you can display how that action shows in your application itself. There is display overlay. This is an action that hovers in the bottom right corner of your app. Display prominently is your action that hovers near the top of your record view. Display inline are icons that are, as the name implies, inline with the actual data itself. When you're selecting display inline, you attach those actions to a column of choice. And then lastly, do not display allows you to hide the action for use uh, by the automation system if you want to. Next is behaviors. Behaviors allow you to choose whether the action is visible or it's not visible, or whether it runs or doesn't run. You'll enter a formula in here that decides when that condition is true and when it's false. Then there's the ability to add confirmation messages either statically or dynamically based off formulas by checking this needs confirmation box. With that, please let me know if you have any questions below. 
and have a good one.